والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, tonight, إن شاء الله, we'll be talking about uh, the prayer times, مواقيت الصلاة. We'll talk about some ayat and some ahadith, and we'll talk about some issues that we have with the timetables and our local timing here in Calgary and the difference between it and other timings that are found on the internet and uh, some results of some personal research and some uh, discussions with some scholars about you know the time table that we have here uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah an-nisa inna salata kanat 'ala al-mu'minin kitaban mawquta so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah an-nisa ayah 103 indeed prayer has been decreed upon the believers a decree of specified times uh, and the ulama of tafsir said يعني هذا الكلام يعني فرضا مؤقتا وقته عليهم وقته الله سبحانه وتعالى على عباده it is an obligation to be offered on a specific time which was set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us about the different times in the Quran he gave us an idea about you know these prayers and we'll talk about the ayah in surah al-isra but it is rasulullah sallallahu jibril actually who came and he taught rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the different times of the prayers al-imam al-shawkani fi fath al-qadir yaqul wal ma'na inna allah aftarad ala ibadihi as-salawat wa katabaha alayhim fi awqatiha al-mahduda al-imam al-shawkani he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation upon his servants to offer these prayers on specific times. لا يجوز لأحد And this is something that is agreed upon. لا يجوز لأحد أن يأتي بها في غير ذلك الوقت It is not permissible for anyone to offer these prayers on a different time except for someone who has a valid excuse that is supported by Sharia. Like sleep or sickness or someone who is traveling. There are different excuses that we'll talk about them inshallah tonight. We'll mention some of them tonight. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أقم الصلاة لدلوك الشمس إلى غسق الليل وقرآن الفجر إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a message to the whole ummah, establish the prayer at the decline of the sun. And most of the ulama, they said here, دلوك الشمس means زوال الشمس, when the, 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 the sun uh, moves from the meridian. Uh, from its meridian, until the darkness of the night. So the ulama, they said, the decline of the sun will include Salat al-Dhuhr and Salat al-Asr, and the darkness or ghasaq al-Layl of the night would include al-Maghrib and al-Isha, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He separated the Salat al-Fajr from these four pray- prayers, and He said, وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا and the Qur'an of dawn, indeed the recitation of dawn is ever witnessed. The ulama, they said it will be witnessed by the angels of the day and the angels of the night. The angels who record our deeds, so they rotate at the time of Fajr. Those of the day or the night will be with us for the whole night till time, Fajr time, and then they will leave to the heaven again, and those who come who are supposed to stay with us during daytime, they come at Fajr time. So they meet at Fajr time, both the angels of the night and the angels of the, of the day. وهذا المعنى ورد في حديث صحيح حديث في صحيح البخاري عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال فضل صلاة الجميع على صلاة الواحد خمس وعشرون درجة وتجتمع ملائكة الليل والنهار في صلاة الصبح This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari He said uh, uh, the prayer offered in congregation is 25 degrees better than the prayer offered individually and the angels of the night and the angel of the day meet at Salat al-Fajr So this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Imam Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu after reciting this hadith he said اقرأوا إن شئتم وقرآن الفجر إن قرآن الفجر كان مشهودا So uh, again the, the verses of the Quran did not specify the timings of Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha but these timings were explained in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on, ta- on that journey Al-Isra' wa Al-Mi'raj and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 50 prayers and Musa alayhi wa sallam told him that 
this is a big number of prayers. Go back to your Lord and ask Him to decrease the number for you. And then he went back and forth between Musa alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he did not see Allah, but there was a conversation, uh, a communication between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, in, a, in a way, in a shape or a form, Allahu alam. Uh, Allahu alam, but uh, we know for a fact that we're not sure the way Muhammad sallallahu was communicated with Allah, but we know for a fact that Aisha radiallahu anha said that Muhammad sallallahu never saw his Lord. He didn't see him. And Musa alayhi salam did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Musa, uh, but Muhammad, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to Musa directly. And he might have talked to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam directly, Allahu a'lam. I'm not sure about this point here. Now, after this event, when he came back to earth, the next day, Jibreel alayhi salam came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Dhuhr time, the next day. And he started teaching him the timings of the, the, the five daily prayers. He came for two days. So in the first day, he taught him the beginning of each prayer. So Dhuhr prayer should be, uh, the, this is the beginning of Dhuhr prayer, Dhuhr time. And he came the next day at the end of that time. So, uh, uh, and uh, it's only for Maghrib. The only salat that was uh, excluded from this rule is Maghrib. He came on the same time for Maghrib, but we'll talk about it inshallah in the fiqh rulings regarding Maghrib prayer. So al-hadith mashhur, hadith Jabir radiallahu anhu, Imam Bukhari used to believe that it is the most authentic uh, hadith in this uh, subject, regarding this subject, uh, in this chapter, the chapter of Mawaqeet al-Salat, the prayer times. But it is not in Sahih al-Bukhari. It is in uh, other books of Sunnah. Even though the other hadith is in Sahih Muslim. The one uh, that, is, that, is, that was mentioned in Medina. But we'll talk about the difference between the two hadith. In this hadith, Jibreel alayhi salam, or the Jabir radiallahu anhu said, Ja'a Jibreel ila nabi sallam hina zalat al-shams. He said, Jibreel came to the Prophet sallam when the sun had passed its zenith. When the sun had passed its meridian. يعني at the time of Zawal, Jibreel came. Uh, وقال يا قم يا محمد فصل الظهر. فقام فصل الظهر. He said, he said, stand up and pray. So Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم stood up and prayed صلاة الظهر. ثم جاءه حين كان ظل كل شيء مثله. فقال قم فصل العصر. فقام فصل العصر. He said then he came to him when the length of an object shadow was equivalent to the length of that object. Or we'd say the shadow of a person is equal to his height. The shadow of a person, a human being, is equal, the shadow is equal to his height. So he came to him at this time and he said, Qum fasalli, fasalli al-asr. So he stood up and he prayed Salat al-asr. ثم جاءه حين غابت الشمس فقال قم فصل المغرب فقام فصل المغرب So he came to him when the sun has just disappeared. The disk of the sun. When it has, even if the brightness is still there, it's not a problem. When the sun has disappeared in the horizon, below the horizon, then he came uh, to him and he said, Stand up and pray Salat al Maghrib. He stood up and prayed Salat al Maghrib. الشفق, the evening twilight. So he said he waited until the evening twilight has disappeared. And he came to him and said, stand up and pray. So he stood up and prayed Salat al-Asr, uh, Salat al-Isha. Now what is a shafaq? What is the evening twilight? Because we have the red color, sometimes the yellow in between. And then after that we have the brightness or the white color. And then darkness. Okay? Majority of the ulama, majority of the sahaba, majority of the scholars of the Arabic language, majority of the scholars, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and their students, and the two famous students, the two famous students of Imam Abu Hanifa, Abu Yusuf, Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani. All these scholars, they used to believe that the evening twilight here for Isha is the redness in the horizon, the redness, the red color. الشفقو هو الحمرة. And there is a hadith uh, from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu 
it was collected by the Imam al-Bayhaqi, and it is mawquf, not marfu' to Rasulullah sallallahu that, that means it is a statement of Abdullah ibn Umar, a sahabi, that ash-shafaquhu al-humratu, is the red color, the redness in the sky. So this is the majority of the opinion, majority of scholars. It's only Abu Hanifa, radiallahu anhu, and two scholars from the Shafi'i madhab, and some sahaba, two or three sahabas, who used to believe that the shafaq is the whiteness. Is the uh, the white color, uh, which is which will make it difficult, very difficult for mo- most Muslims to pray Isha, if we wait for the white white color, white, uh, you know, this is the brightness to disappear. We'll be, b- be praying Isha maybe one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, majority of scholars, majority of scholars, they said the shafaq here means the red color, Wallahu Taala alam, and this is the opinion that is adopted by most of the scholars, even Imam Abu Hanifa. And as I told you, his two famous scholars, Abu Yusuf and Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani, did not agree with him. And some Hanafi scholars, they said, actually, Imam Abu Hanifa himself changed his opinion at the end of his life. And he, sa- and, uh, he said, and he used to say at the end of his life, that the shafaq is the red color, Wallahu ta'ala alam. I'm not sure about it, but this is mentioned in some sources of Hanafi uh, fiqh. ثُمَّ جَاءَهُ حِينَ سَطَعَ الْفَجْرُ بِالصُّبْحِ فَقَالَ قُمْ يَا مُحَمَّدْ فَصَلِّي فَقَامَ فَصَلَّى الصُّبْحِ Then he came to him when the dawn broke, يعني in the beginning, and said to him, O oh Muhammad, stand up and pray Salat al-Fajr. So he stood up and prayed Fajr prayer. وَجَاءَهُ مِنَ الْغَدِّ So he came to him the next day. حَتَّى حِينَ صَارَ ظِلُّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مِثْلَهُ So in the first day he came to him, at the time of when the sun had passed, has just passed the zenith or the meridian. Now in the second day he came when the shadow, the length of an object's shadow was uh, almost equal to uh, uh, to the same length as the object itself. Or the, the shadow of a person was equal to his height. So he came in the second day and he said, قُمْ فَصَلِّي Pray Salat al-Dhuhr. Like Mathana, for example, uh, in the first day he came to him at 1.30, for example, or 134, these days is uh, Zawal is 134. And he came to him in the second day, just before Asr. Asr these days is 5.50, 50, right? So b- just before Asr, which is around maybe 5.40 or 5.30. Uh, f- yeah, he gave him enough time to pray Dhuhr, just before Asr. Because at the end he will tell him between these two times, it's a time for these prayers for Dhuhr and for Asr and for different prayers. ثُمَّ جَاءَ حِينَ كَانَ ظِلُّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مِثْلَيْهِ فَقَالَ قُمْ فَصَلِّ الْعَصْرِ فَقَامَ فَصَلَّ الْعَصْرِ Then he came to him in the same, the second day, when the length of an object's shadow was twice the length of its object in the second day for Asr prayer. Uh, and he said, stand up and pray. So he stood up and pray Asr. ثُمَّ جَاءَهُ حِينَ غَابَتِ الشَّمْسِ وَقْتًا وَاحِدًا لَمْ يَزُلْ عَنْهُ فَقَالَ قُمْ فَصَلِّ الْمَغْرِبِ So in this story, in Mecca, Jibreel came to him at the same time for Maghrib. He did not give him a gap for Maghrib. That's why there are many people who are very careful about the Maghrib prayer. But we will talk about a different hadith which give us an extended time till Shafaq till the disappearance of the evening twilight. And the other hadith is in Sahih Muslim too. So we could be talking about naskh abrogation here, or we could be, we can uh, use actually the two hadith in different ways. We'll talk about it now, inshallah. But this is what Jibreel did, alayhi salam. He came to him in the second day for Maghrib prayer at the same time. ثُمَّ جَاءَهُ الْعِشَاءِ حِينَ ذَهَبَ نِصْفُ الليل أَوْ قَالَ ثُلُثُ الليل Different... Uh, uh, Maybe the, the narrator sometimes, if the narrator is not sure, he will tell you this or this. Uh, based on that, there is a controversy, uh, disagreement between the scholars about the time for Isha, but we'll talk about it, inshallah. So he came to him for Isha prayer after half of the night had passed. Or he said one third of the night, and he prayed Isha prayer. Most likely half of the night, Wallahu ta'ala alam, because this is the most correct opinion. ثُمَّ جَاءَهُ الصُّبْحُ حِينَ أَسْفَرَ جِدًّا فَقَالَ قُمْ فَصَلِّ الصُّبْحِ فَقَامَ فَصَلَّ الصُّبْحِ ثُمَّ قَالَ مَا بَيْنَ هَذَيْنِ وَقْتٌ كُلُّهُ So he said he came to him for Fajr prayer when dawn was very clear. In the beginning, uh, he came to him when dawn broke, just broke. Uh, the, in the second day, he came when dawn was very clear. Yani the whole, the horizon was, was, everything was white around him. 
So he said, stand up and pray. So uh, uh, he prayed Salat al-Fajr and he said, between these two times are times for the prayers. And actually in a different version, he said, هَكَذَا صَلَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ and this is a proof that the prophets and messengers before Rasulullah Sallallahu used to pray these prayers, Wallahu Ta'ala Alam. In a different version he said, this is how prophets and messengers used to pray before you, Wallahu Ta'ala Alam. So this hadith is in Sunan Tirmidhi, Nasa'i ibn Hibban, and Imam Bukhari, Imam Tirmidhi said that Imam Bukhari used to believe that this is the most authentic hadith. Uh, the narration of Jabir, because this hadith was narrated by many Sahabis, so Imam Bukhari used to believe that the narration, the version of Jabir ibn Abdullah is the most authentic uh, uh, version. This is the one that I mentioned now. So as I said, this, play, uh, this story took place in Mecca, and the next day, uh, the next day, يعني after the Isra al-Mi'raj, the, uh, there are some people who think, one time I was giving a lecture about this subject, and someone told me that you said that Muhammad Wasallam went to Bayt al-Maqdis and prayed as an imam with all prophets and messengers. So he led the other prophets and messengers in a prayer there. And then he went to the heavens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed the prayers upon him and upon his ummah. And he felt that this is a contradiction. And he said, I didn't want to embarrass you in front of people, I didn't want to ask you in front of people. But he came privately after the halaqa, jazaallah khair, and he said, I feel like this is a contradiction. This is not, there is no contradiction here. Rasulullah used to pray before the Isra al-Mi'raj. But he didn't know about the five daily prayers. He used to pray most likely two rak'ahs in the morning, two rak'ahs in the evening. So Jibreel told him about the prayers before his trip, his journey to Al-Isra al-Mi'raj. What happened in, during his journey of Al-Isra al-Mi'raj, the five daily prayers were prescribed upon him and upon his ummah. But he was familiar with prayers. He used to go with Ali radiallahu anhu, Zayd ibn Haritha outside the city of Mecca, and they used to pray two rak'ahs in the morning and two rak'ahs in the evening. Wallahu ta'ala alam. طيب, uh, the, the other important hadith regarding this issue is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. And this hadith, uh, uh, يعني this, uh, uh, يعني Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu heard this hadith in the city of Medina. So the first story took place in Mecca. The second story is in Medina. And there is no story here, Jibreel did not come to Rasulullah sallam. But Rasulullah sallam told the Sahaba again about the timings of the prayer. What is different here is he gave us an extension for Al-Maghrib. Okay? And then about Al-Isha, he gave us the exact time of Al-Isha in this hadith. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. So Rasulullah said, وَقْتُ الظُّهْرِ إِذَا زَالَتِ الشَّمْسُ وَكَانَ ذِلُّ الرَّجُّ لِكَطُولِهِ مَا لَمْ يَحْذُرْ وَقْتُ الْعَصْرِ So he said the time of Dhuhr prayer is when the sun passes the, the, the meridian and a man's shadow is the same length as his height. And it lasts as long as the time for Asr prayer has not come. This is Dhuhr. We don't have problem with Dhuhr in Calgary. Uh, people don't have problem with Dhuhr anywhere. Uh, so it's not an issue. Don't worry about it. And he said, وَقْتُ الْعَصْرِ مَا لَمْ تَصْفَرَّ الشَّمْسُ so he said the time for Asr prayer as long as the sun has not become pale. And the sun becomes pale maybe 15-20 minutes before Maghrib. That means you are allowed to delay Asr till that time. So don't delay it till before Maghrib. That's why the ulama they said this is waqt ikhtiyari and waqt daruri. So what is waqt daruri? Waqt ikhtiyari we can translate it as optional, optional time. Yani you, are, you have the option to delay the prayer till this time, till the sun becomes pale or yellow, which is 15-20 minutes before Maghrib. Between this time and Maghrib is waqt daruri. What is waqt daruri? Is you are allowed only, you are only allowed to delay prayer when you have an excuse. So the ulama said, based on this hadith, we are not allowed to delay asr prayer beyond that time. Unless someone is sick, someone is facing some difficulty, then he is allowed to delay prayer and prays asr 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes before Maghrib. You have to be careful about that. Uh, especially in winter here, winter is very difficult to me because, because there are, we have only two hours between Dhuhr and Asr and two hours between Asr and Maghrib. So you have to be careful about take care of your Asr prayer 
try to pray Asr always 15-20 minutes before Maghrib. Unless you have an excuse, then it is okay, it is fine. And if you pray it after the sun becomes pale, it is not Qada. It becomes Qada if you pray Asr after Maghrib. So it's still waqt for Asr, but we are not allowed to delay it till that time unless we have an excuse, a valid excuse. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu said, وقت صلاة المغرب ما لم يغب الشفق. So this is different here. So he, he, uh, he said the time for Maghrib prayer is as long as a shafaq has not ended. A shafaq is the evening twilight, and we said the majority of scholars used to believe that it is the red color. الحمرة في الأفق. And the red color in the horizon. And he said وقت العشاء إلى نصف الليل الأوسط. يعني the وقت العشاء we are allowed to delay عشاء till the midnight. Midnight here does not mean uh, 12 o'clock. It does not mean 12 o'clock is the Islamic midnight. What is the Islamic midnight? It's from Maghrib till uh, Fajr. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, from Maghrib till Fajr because this is the night time. And then you divide it into two. Let's say it is eight hours. So what is, ha- if you divide it into two, four hours, you get four hours. You add four hours to Maghrib. Maghrib these days is, uh, these days is not four hours. As in, this is an example. The, the interval between Fajr, uh, Maghrib and, and Fajr is not four hours. It's around, so Isha, uh, Maghrib is around 9.40. So 26 hours, 6 hours, and exactly 6 hours and 20 minutes. So the half will be 3 and 10 minutes, right? So you add 3, 10 minutes to 9.40. That would be 12.50. So that's midnight. So you are allowed to delay Isha till this time. Unless you have an excuse that you can pray Isha after 12.50. If you have an excuse, a valid excuse, you were sick. Uh, any valid excuse. So that's waqt al daruri al waqt al ikhtiyari the optional time is between Maghrib till 12.50 these days. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. And then he said, waqt salat al-subh min tulu'i al-fajri ma lam tatlu'i al-shams. There are people in the summer who worry about praying 45 minutes after, after fajr. You don't have to worry about that. As long as you pray before Tulu al-Shams, yes, it is, it is recommended to, to pray in the beginning. But we delay it these days around 40 minutes, make it easy to people. Even with 40 minutes, many people are not able to attend it in the summer, in the masajid. Hopefully they are praying on time in, uh, at home. But this is what Rasulullah said, and the time of Fajr prayer is from the appearance of dawn, as long as the sun has not r- uh, risen. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Now the problem of Isha, Isha uh, timings in Calgary. Uh, there is a difference. There is, a, uh, there is an issue that has to be solved. Uh, I need to tell you about what's going on. Uh, the difference between Maghrib and Isha has been fixed in Calgary long time ago, in the early 80s, or uh, the end of the 70s, by three members of the community with the presence of an imam. who was here, I was told, I asked a brother, who used to live here in Calgary from the 70s, the middle of the 70s. And I told him who fixed, uh, who did the timetable for Calgary. And he mentioned three brothers from, who were involved in the, the community at that time. And some of them are still alive. And he mentioned uh, under the authority or the supervision of an imam. He's, he was called uh, Imam Sheikh Abdul Fattah al-Mahruqi. And I met him. He's a good brother, mashallah. He's mashallah, senior brother, senior imam. He's maybe 80 or 85 years old now. I met him in 1998 in Vancouver in BC. He used to be an imam at that time here in Calgary. So he told me that they consulted some people from Jordan, from Egypt. They looked at different timings and they came up with our timetable. Uh, so they fixed uh, the, the difference between Maghrib and Isha, 90 minutes, and it is the opinion of some scholars, the opinion of some organizations. However, we have different timings on the internet. <coughs> and, uh, and in here in, uh, in Calgary, for the whole year, the difference between Maghrib and Isha is 90 minutes. Uh, except in June, some imams, some local imams, try to come up with shtihad and, and try to... Uh, tried to solve this problem a couple of years ago, six, seven years ago, I don't remember. And they decreased actually this difference 
from 90 to 80 sometimes. It is between 80 to 90. Uh, sometimes it is 85, 86, 87. But uh, one week or 10 days in June, especially in the, the beginning of the summer, it is around 80 minutes. Uh, so it goes up to uh, 11.15. Uh, a long time ago, it used to go up till 11.25, because the difference for the whole year was supposed to be 90 minutes. And inshallah, we will keep it 90 minutes, we always keep it 90 minutes here, based on uh, observations, because it is haram. I did some observations with some brothers here in the community in the summertime. And it is haram to pray before time. It is a responsibility, Ikhwan. I, went for, I have my witnesses, yani. I, got, I went with a couple of brothers. We watched uh, the redness, the disappearance of the redness in the summer. And we found that 90 minutes is fine. 90 minutes. Uh, I have to be honest with you, I didn't do it every night. It's difficult. I didn't do it every, in every week. But for a couple of days, for the last two years or three years, for a couple of days in July and June, I used to go outside, we used to go to Nose Hill Park. Uh, there is a hill there, uh, where there is also a place here beside uh, 16th Avenue and 19th Street. If, uh, at the intersection you go to the left side, there is a residential area. Behind it there is a park, and between the park, if you go left towards downtown, between the, par- uh, the residential area and the green park, you'll be able to look at the horizon. And you'll be able to see the redness disappearing there. So we found that 90 minutes is fine actually. Uh, yani we, are, we are fine. Uh, but there are different timings, I will, mention, I will mention them here. The purpose of my observations were not to come up with the new timings. I cannot do it. New timing is to go every night and look at the disappearance of the red color and, and do the same thing for, uh, for Fajr and take a note and write it at the exact time, this is something difficult, very difficult. Someone who can, I mean, it's a full-time job, it's very difficult. But what I did with the purpose of these observations is to compare, to verify our local timing and compare it with the other timings on the internet. Because people are confused between our local timing and the one that is on the internet. On the Islamic Finder we have different timings, but the one that is bothering people is the Isna one. The North America timing, because now it is the default calculation that is found in smartphones, in iPhones and, and all smartphones. So sometimes we'll be praying Isha here, we finish, we say Salam, we offer our Salam, and the Adhan is, now we hear the Adhan in one of the cell phones. So people are saying, and I was approached by many brothers, what's, what's going on? Uh, tell us what's going on, what is the difference between our local timing and this is not timing. I'll give you an example. May 25th, this year, 2015, local, our local time, 11.04. Uh, North America is 11.25, so the difference is 21 minutes between uh, our local time and the one in North America. Uh, ISNA, that was prepared by ISNA. Umm al it's an organization, a Saudi organization, that did calculation for the whole world. Uh, their timing for Isha, for Calgary, is the same, 11.04. It's the same like our timing, 90 minutes. University of Islamic Science in Karachi, Pakistan, Isha should be at 12 o'clock in the morning. Two hours, the difference is two hours, 26 minutes. So the difference between our time and their time for Calgary is 56 minutes. Muslim World League, 11.47 p.m. And Egyptian General Authority of Survey, 11.54. The difference is 50 minutes. So uh, all of them, are f- f- uh, they are following a formula. I don't know the formula, but I know the variable in this formula, which is the angle of the, ha- of the sun below the horizon. So when you look at the horizon, the sun, when the sun disappears, it keeps, it keeps going down, for example, so there is an angle. So some of them, they follow the angle of 18, 19, 15, 12, different, different ishtihadat, different opinions. And these are estimations. But what is the, the principle, general principle? The general principle is observation. At the time of Rasulullah and not every Muslim, by the way, not every Muslim has to go by... Sorry. 
Not every Muslim has to go by himself and observe. Uh, and he has, I mean, not everyone has to do the observation by himself. This is not an Islamic obligation upon every Muslim. The time of Rasulullah they had two people who were involved doing it in charge of Adhan. Bilal and Abdullah ibn uh, um Maktoum. So Ibn Abi Maktoum used to, he used to be a blind. His family member used to, tell him, used to tell him about these signs. And Bilal was not blind, was able to see by himself these times. So it is one Mu'addin who is supposed to be appointed by the local authority and that's it. And this, this person is supposed to watch for these signs and make the Adhan and announce the time for the prayer. So it is not an obligation upon every Muslim to go and look for these signs. The ulama, they said it is fine to follow these timetables nowadays. They are a good alternative. You just have to make sure you try to combine between your timetable and direct observation. And this is what I try to do in the last two years. Not to come up with a new timing, but to verify our local timing and compare it with uh, other, uh, other timings on the internet. Now, the ulama of, uh, especially for Fajr, of Amja, Assembly of Muslim Jurists in America, among them is Salah Sawi and some ulama there. They did their research and they said that, especially for Fajr, they said all the other timings should be ignored. And they are based on false dawn. We'll talk about false dawn. Uh, and they said people should follow Isna. But uh, based on some observation that I did only these days, from Monday till Thursday. Last night I didn't do any observation, but from Monday till Wednesday. I went to that place that I mentioned. And I, I saw no redness. At 11.04, 11.03, 11.02, there was no redness. It disappeared. So that means our local time is okay, is fine. But if I have to pray based on the time of Isna, in your smartphones, I have to wait till 11.25. But you look with your eyes, there is no redness. You cannot disbelieve your eyes. There is something faint, faint, very faint light there. And it is, it is so weak, it is so weak as to, to, to be difficult to perceive. Like you look at it and you say, is there a different color there? Between yellow to brownish, but it's not, it's not clear. It's difficult to perceive it. To say that there is a different color there, other than the brightness of the, in the sky. The brightness, we said, it's not an option. The white color is not an option. Majority of scholars said, if the redness disappeared, then Isha is in. So you can pray Isha. So just in the last three days, as I said, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I went to that place every, uh, every, t- every night. Uh, just around 11, I parked my car and looked at the horizon. The red, this red color was not there. So Alhamdulillah, يعني, it's fine. But I cannot claim that I did for the whole year. And that's why the ulama who said 90 minutes is not good for the whole year, I agree with them. The difference in the winter could be 80 minutes, could be 60 minutes, could be 50 minutes. How do we solve this problem? Pray Maghrib on time. Don't delay Maghrib beyond 15-20 minutes. And you will be fine. So this is how we solve this problem. Because it's difficult for us now, we don't have someone who is willing to go every night and watch for the disappearance of the red, redness in the horizon. Especially in the winter. So the, the 90 minutes is not good. If I claim that, if I tell you that 90 minutes is good for the whole year, no, I'll be, I'll be giving you the wrong information. There are many ulama who said 90 minutes is not good for, but at least in the summer, 90 minutes is fine. 90 minutes is fine. Based on the, uh, you know, our observations with some brothers here from this place. And some other places too. Tayyip. And all these calculations are, as I said, are, are estimated. Yani. Is it possible to combine between Maghrib and Isha during the summer? Some people ask this question. So some ulama said that if someone is a, if the Muslim is facing some hardship, some difficulty, uh, he is allowed to combine 
between Maghrib and Isha, as long as he does not make it a habit, as long as he does not make it a habit, this is, it has to be very clear. I mean, I don't mind if children who did not reach the age of puberty, they have school, they can combine. Because they are children, it's not wajib for them to pray. Uh, you know, they will not be taken to account. They can benefit from this ruksa. For adults, they can benefit from this concession as long as they don't make it a habit. They have to have a valid reason. You are sick, you are extremely tired, or uh, an excuse. What is their delil is the hadith that is found in Sahih Muslim. قال ابن عباس رضي الله عنه جمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بين الظهر والعصر والمغرب والعشاء في غير خوف ولا مطر قال وكيع وكيع was, uh, he lived at the time of ibn Abbas قلت لابن عباس لما فعل ذلك قال كي لا يحرج أمته هذا الحديث في صحيح مسلم العلة قال العلماء العلة من هذا الجمع is رفع الحرج عن الأمة so here ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joined Dhuhr and Maghrib, uh, Dhuhr and Asr, and Maghrib and Isha in Medina. There was no fear when there was no fear and no rain. No fear and no rain. So there was no apparent reason for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to combine between Dhuhr and Asr. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated this hadith, was asked about it. He said he did not want to cause hardship to his ummah. So he wanted to give you an exit when you need it. And all the ulama, they said, you have to have a reason to combine. Majority of scholars, I have to be honest with you, believe that this is jam'a suri. Jam'a suri, it is a kind of simulated combination. Yani it's not a real combination. A real combination takes place when dhuhr is prayed at the time of asr. Or asr is prayed at the time of dhuhr. This is a real combination. Simulated combination, it looks like a combination, but it is not a real combination. And he, Ibn Abbas, in one of the ahadith, he explained it, he said he delayed dhuhr, and he prayed uh, asr early. So it's not a real combination, he delayed dhuhr. This is the, the understanding of majority of scholars. Based on these differences, the ulama said, follow the ayah. إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا يعني the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, prescribed these prayers on set times specified times but if you have an excuse uh, many scholars uh, contemporary scholars are saying you can benefit جمع, you don't have to do jam only when you are traveling we shorten our prayers only when we are traveling you cannot shorten your prayers when you are in Calgary you can't, you can't do that when you are local, you cannot shorten your prayers. But you are allowed to combine your prayers if you are facing some difficulty or hardship. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Now when it comes to Fajr prayer, Al-Fajr Fajran, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there are two types of Fajr. Al-Fajr al-Sadiq wal fajr al-Kadhib. False dawn and a true dawn. Okay? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Fajr Fajran, فجر يحرم فيه الطعام وتحل فيه الصلاة وفجر تحرم فيه الصلاة أي صلاة الفجر ويحل فيه الطعام هذا الحديث روى الحاكم والبيهقي وصححه الشيخ الألباني وكثير من العلماء سورة الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith he said there are two dawns the dawn when food becomes haram and prayer becomes permissible uh, so food becomes haram when we are fasting and prayer is permissible Yani we are allowed to pray Fajr prayer. And the dawn when prayer is haram. Prayer is haram. That means it's haram. The ulama, they said it's haram to pray before time. So there is no problem with delaying your prayer. The problem is, are you praying before time? That's the problem. That's the question that you have to ask all the time. If you delay your prayer half an hour later, will 40 minutes, it's not a problem. The problem is if you pray before time. This is a real serious issue here. Uh, so uh, Rasulullah sallallahu in this hadith and he said about uh, the second dawn he said and the dawn when prayer is haram and food is permitted food is permitted in Ramadan when we are fasting هذا الفجر الكاذب the false dawn so uh, and it's called الشفق الفلكي in the Arabic language astronomical twilight and there are if you do a research about twilight in the, in the internet 
you find that uh, yani, uh, people, uh, people who deal with astronomy, with this science, they talk about civil twilight, nautical twilight, and astronomical twilight. Ignore these, these calculations. <coughs> Ignore them. Because if you do, you do research about twilight in Calgary, this is what you find on the internet. Ignore them. Rasulullah has given us, Allah actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us criteria how to know about Fajr time in Surah Al-Baqarah. We'll talk about it now. And everyone is familiar with this ayah. We just follow, if you use, use this ayah, follow the guidance of this ayah, we'll be able to find uh, the right time for Fajr. And the second dawn is the false dawn that Rasulullah talked about here. It is the second dawn uh, that he mentioned here in this hadith which is the whiteness that appears, the ulama, they said it appears vertically in the sky like pillars. And it appears 20 minutes to 25 minutes before the real fajr, before the true fajr. Uh, in a different hadith, Rasulullah he said, لا يمنعنكم من سحوركم آذان بلال. Bilal used to make adhan before the true fajr, to wake up people, to help them to wake up. وَلَا الْفَجْرُ الْمُسْتَطِيلِ الْفَجْرُ الْمُسْتَطِيلِ is the false, الْفَجْرُ الْكَاذِبِ it is vertically uh, in the sky, it, lo- it, it looks like pillars. And I'm, personally, I, didn't, I did not observe it. Uh, but I looked at the internet, I looked at the picture of this false dawn on the internet. But with my eyes, I did not see it. Uh, so he said, the one... Uh, that is, uh, he said, do not let the adhan of Bilal stop you from eating suhoor. Bilal in Ramadan used to make adhan before fajr. And Ibn Ummi Maktoum used to make fajr, uh, make adhan after fajr is in. The true fajr is in. Uh, and the difference between the two adhans was, was the length uh, or the time needed to recite around 50 verses of the Quran. Wallahu ta'ala alam. This is the the information that was given to us by some sahabas. The difference, the time, uh, the difference between the two adhans at that time. But we shouldn't worry about this hadith now. But this hadith is a dalil, but that, that there are two, uh, two uh, types, two fajrs. And he said, Rasulullah here, do not let the adhan of Bilal stop you from eating suhoor, or the vertical dawn, the one that is vertical. But the dawn which appears along the horizon, if you look at the east, the eastern side, the horizon, it has to, it has to be spread. Ibn Abbas, he said, is the one that is spread on the top of mountains. And Ata ibn, Arabah, ibn Abi Rabah said, is the one that is spread on the top of mountains. It appears in the eastern, eastern side. And it is connected with the horizon. The other one is not connected with the horizon. But we shouldn't worry about that. I am explaining this to tell you something. That the ulama of Amja... The Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America did the, they did the research and they are very they are confident that all the other timings on the internet have to be ignored except Isna, except North America. So in the state they, they follow the timing that was prepared by Isna. And it is different than our timing, but I will tell you about this difference here. I'll give you an example of today, Friday, May 29. So uh, today the North America timing is 3.38. Umm al-Qura, 2.57. 2.57 in the morning. University of Science in Karachi, 3.04. Egyptian Authority of Survey, 2.42. 2.42. So the ulama of, uh, of Amja... Majma' Fuqaha Sharia in America. He said all these timings are based on the Ashafaq al Falaki, astronomical twilight. And they have to be ignored. All of these are based on the false dawn. And I respect this ulama. I'm confident about their scholarship and their ilm and their taqwa in, in, in the United States of America. But when it comes to uh, uh, North America timing, you know, we always have to go back to what? To our local uh, observation. When we compare it to our local time, what is our local time today? Is 3.59. You look at the difference, I compared between the timing of our local timing and the timing of Isna for the whole year. We are always behind them, which is good. We are in the safe side. 
we are always behind, except in two months, around November and December, we agree with them. We are almost the same. Uh, we, our timing maybe is before them with, with one minute or two. Sometimes in some days. Most of the year, for the most of the year, we are behind them by tw- 15 minutes or 20 minutes, which is good. It makes you happy. So we are in the safe side when it comes to Fajr. How do we do in Ramadan now? Now, Ramadan, uh, the, the ulama, they said, there are some fatawas here. There are two options for you in Ramadan. Either if you want to be in the safe side, you do imsak based on the time of your smartphone. Isna. Which is around 15 minutes. The difference, uh, you look at June 18th, the difference is 15 minutes. If you want to be in the safe side. If you want to be, uh, if you want to follow our local time, it's fine. Why? Because the ayah says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ And even this ulama who did this research, they said these are estimations. They always say the general principle is local observation. And last year in this place, we were doing i'tikaf. Last year we were doing i'tikaf here. Ramadan. And he used to go every day, almost every day, to that room in the second, in the second uh, floor. And there is a window there. We used to look at the horizon in the eastern part of the, ta- the city. And alhamdulillah, for a couple of days, not for the whole ten days, I was very confident that white, uh, the brightness of the fajr would appear when the brother is making adhan here. This is last year, for a couple of days. Not for the whole year. Still, Again, 90, 90 minutes is not good for the whole year. But I cannot verify it for the whole year. I cannot do it. But I'm trying to, my best to give you an idea that we are for the whole year, we are in the safe side when it comes to Fajr. Ignore the timings of your smartphones and follow our timings. We are in the safe side. In Ramadan, yes, North America time is before our time. You have two options. If you want to follow uh, the North America time, based on their MJ research, you, 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 you will be taking the safe side. And I, um, I might, we are preparing the schedule for this Ramadan, we might do the Imsakiya based on their time. Uh, there is no Imsak in the Sunnah. You, you, you are allowed to eat till Fajr time. But in many masajid, in many countries, they, want, they like to be on the safe side, so the they leave a gap of 10 minutes or 15 minutes and they tell people stop eating 10 minutes before Fajr and they call it Imsak. In Sharia there is no Imsak. Imsak is at the time of Fajr. Right? But if we do it here in Calgary and if we print it in the, in the calendar it's just because we want to observe the other opinion. We want to respect the other opinion which is North America in Ramadan. We don't need it for the whole year. We are happy. For the whole year, we are, our timing is, be, is behind them, alhamdulillah, and which is safe. But for Ramadan, if you want to be in the safe side, then you stop, or you look at Islamic Finder, you find the default time calculation there is North America. Uh, it's around 15 minutes before our local time. If we, you, you want to follow our local time, uh, this is the fatwa of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen and some other scholars. He said, if you are not sure, you can continue till the last, the end. The, 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 the last, the, till the last time that you have. Uh, you know, the later time. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمْ Eat and drink until the white thread of the dawn appears to you distinct. You are able to distinguish between the white thread of the uh, Fajr and the, and the black thread of the night. And I used to do it in the winter time. I used to go through uh, Deerfoot, coming here to this place to, to pray. When I, when I drive through Deerfoot to coming to Memorial, I'm able to look at the eastern side and the western side. Uh, I was able to distinguish, alhamdulillah, for many days between the white thread of Fajr in the eastern side and the black thread of the darkness in the, in the western side. This is how we know Fajr. Fajr, you wait until you are. If everything is dark around you, there is no Fajr. 
And for a couple of days, the time was in based on the ta- timetable, but everything, everything was dark. Allah alam, maybe because of the, the clouds, I'm not sure. But for many days, alhamdulillah, I was able to see the difference between the white, the brightness, the whiteness in the east, and the darkness in the western side of the city. And this is the best way to find out about Fajr. Because sometimes in the summer, the, the nights are very bright. And it's difficult to distinguish between the, the brightness that is in the night left from Isha time, and between the brightness of Fajr. So the best time is to look at both sides, east and west, and you try to distinguish between the white thread in the east, and between darkness in the, uh, in the west. As I said, you don't have to do it as Muslims, like everyone has to go outside and do it. But um, this is what we have these days, and these timetables, and these calculations. And so far, as I said, I'm happy with uh, our times for Fajr in Calgary. Uh, because they are better than North American timings and also uh, an Isha so far we are fine 90 minutes especially in the summer but in the in the winter it could be less than 90 minutes so you have to be careful pray Maghrib so you pray Maghrib on time in the winter don't delay it Asr prayer try to pray it always 15-20 minutes before Maghrib and Fajr if you always delay it 10-15 minutes is good to be in the safe side in Ramadan during Ramadan, try to, if you want to be in the safe side, stop eating 15 minutes before local timing, or follow Isna timing, North America timing, and you will be fine. Everything will be fine. We might miss few days during the year. Allahu alam. Allahu alam. Yani, I'm not. Uh, but the, this is what we have nowadays in, uh, in Calgary. And uh, yani, I believe that the brothers who did the timetable long time ago in Calgary did a good job. This is what I believe. And they did their best. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Yani, uh, but based on these observations, I think they did a good job. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Jazakumullah khair.